Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 this evening. I want to give you one verse of scripture and the thought will be uh, from that one verse. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and uh, let's look at this little verse here that I want to use tonight as a thought. It might encourage you and I hope it will of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 10. Don't forget now, come and help Saturday. We need help in the bus ministry with the bus workers, bus drivers, bus, bus helpers, uh, money, tires, uh, good, you name it, you name it. I uh, got one tore up back here right now. They're trying to get fixed this week. And um, so help out in the bus ministry. The Lord will bless you for helping kids. Second Corinthians chapter number one, look at verse number 10. I'm going to read that verse twice. First of all, let's look, read it like this. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. The word I want you to look at is deliver. Now, let's read it again. Verse 10. Who delivered, E-D on the end of it, that means past tense, delivered. And doth deliver. Doth is present tense, doeth. He doth right now deliver. And then look at the last part, in whom we trust that he will yet, future, deliver us. So there's three tenses of the word deliver there. He did deliver us. He is delivering us and he will deliver us. The, the, the assurance we have that he will deliver us is that he did and that he is. He did deliver us past, he is delivering us present, and we're convinced he's gonna deliver us future. And so I wanna preach tonight on the great deliverer. God is many things in the Bible. It calls him our savior. It calls him our master. It calls him our Lord. It calls him, uh, you know, all kinds of things. The lily of the valley, the bright morning star. There's bunches of names for the Lord Jesus Christ and for God the Father uh, and uh, them, uh, them two and three. And so tonight, we're gonna look at him as a deliverer. Uh, we look at him as a father. We look at him as a provider. We look at him as a savior like we did this morning. Tonight, we'll look at the Lord as our deliverer. The Bible said that he delivered us. Now, we all know, and it's easy to believe this part, God delivered in the past. We don't have much of a problem believing that. Uh, everybody I know believes God delivered people in the past. I mean, every Christian believes, boy, I'm telling you, God done this and God done that. And we like to talk about what God did in the past, and he did, he did. I mean, God delivered Noah, uh, the story there, uh, uh, that, uh, that thing up yonder, that Noah's Ark thing up yonder in Kentucky. I've never been there. Uh, some of y'all have been there. Carrie's been there, I think. But Randy, y'all have been there. Others have been there. Everybody that goes says it's absolutely just mind-boggling uh, to see that thing in person. And you know what? We, sometimes we forget about what that was, that God did, that, that the Lord drowned the whole world in a flood and delivered one man and his family, Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, eight people. Eight is the number of new beginning. And so Noah came out on the other side of the flood and started populating the whole world all over again. God told him, just like he told Adam, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. God delivered Noah. Noah's day was wicked. Noah's day was ungodly. The Bible said they'd got so wicked that the thoughts of their heart was only evil continued. That means people couldn't even think about nothing but that nasty, dirty filth. I've had ladies in church come up to me and they said, Brother Danny, where I work, everybody there, their mind, it stays in the gutter. It's just some, yeah, nobody can't walk by without making some dirty, filthy, uh, nasty command, uh, comment about it. And you know what? Uh, that's the way it got in Noah's day. But God delivered Noah and his family. He sure did. I mean, he made that ark float uh, for over a year there in that water. It didn't crash into a mountain like the Titanic did the iceberg. It didn't hit a big rock like on Mount Mitchell somewhere or over on Ararat or, or 
something, the Swiss Alps or something like that. God made that thing float around and it was all over, the, I don't know how far around the world it got during that year, but he pushed it right back over there where he wanted it and landed it on the top of Mount Ararat. What about that? Amen. God was God never, listen, you ain't going down if you're in a boat God's in. And you do remember the Lord said when Noah got in, he said, Noah, come thou into the ark. God didn't go out there and say, no, I know it, get in the ark. When God says come in, that means he's already in there telling Noah and his family to come in. I'm telling you tonight, God delivered in the past. God delivered just Lot back there in, the, in Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis chapter number 19. You know that story. Uh, all these stories are in there for our admonition and our learning. If you think you're having problems tonight, Listen to these stories. God delivered Lot. He was down there in Sodom. Buddy, you talk about wicked. It was, it was wicked in Sodom. I don't know. I wasn't there, but I ain't, I ain't dumb neither. And I don't, I don't see how Sodom and Gomorrah could have been any more wicked than this old world is tonight. I mean, they didn't have internet. They didn't have uh, video cameras. They didn't have big screens. They didn't have airplanes to fly them all over the world. And every sin you can imagine was committed in Sodom, but they didn't have nothing on this generation me and you is living in. Now, did God get a lot out? He sure did. I'm telling you, he got him out of there, people. God got Lot out of Sodom. He about had to drag him out by the nap of the neck, but he got him out. Lot wasn't even where he needed to be with God. Oh, Lot was backslid, sitting down there in the gate of Sodom, fellowshipping with people he had no business fellowshipping with. His sons-in-law didn't have no confidence in him or faith in his testimony. His two of his daughters wouldn't even listen to him. And I'm telling you, but old Lot, God said he's mine, he's mine, he's mine. And he sent them angels down there and they said, we're gonna call it down. Burn it down, God. Burn it down. That's the loving God you hear them preach about on TV. The, the God that loves everybody and everybody's all. You know what he did? He turned that city into ashes. It's what the Bible said in the book of Jude. He turned it into ashes. I'm not trying to be mean or ugly tonight, but that's what God's going to do to New Orleans. That's what God's going to do to Charlotte. That's what God's going to do to Asheville. That's what God's going to do to Los Angeles. He's going to burn it to ashes one of these days. He said, I don't believe in a God like that. Himself, do what you want to. He did it in history. He burned it to the ground. And he was right when he did it too. And he was holy. And God delivered Lot. He sent that angel down there and said, get him out of there. He said, he's backslid. He won't come. He said, get him out. And he growled and said, let's go, boy. And got him out. God delivered in the past. And then God delivered David from the, from the giant. I, I love them stories like that. The children of Israel. Uh, from Egypt's bondage. They were down there. There's no way they could get loose. No way they could get loose. Uh, down there in Egypt, there was some wicked stuff going on there in Egypt, buddy. Uh, them, them pyramids, you study them pyramids, they, they ain't no way in the world them Egyptian slaves built them things. No, I don't care what you say. You, you ain't done your homework, buddy. Uh, they could not, they could gone that thing up exactly north, east, south, and west with, with a, with a, with a lat latitude, longitude on the earth. It's smacked down right in the middle of all the earth's land surface right there at the Giza Plateau over there in Egypt them big old blocks they said that they had to set one of them big old blocks which is Lord bigger than big as a car uh, every few seconds for I don't know how many years and buddy that thing's aligned perfect with the planets and I got some little things going out through it uh, the king's chamber and all that stuff there's some weird stuff behind that pyramid and that big sphinx out there in front of it that's a half cat half man the rebel Revelation chapter 13 uh, where they said he was a beast like a leopard and that's a cat man brother like, like a cat man and, and ladies and gentlemen uh, we won't get into all of that but all of that stuff was going on in Egypt there was so this, you say well how did them big blocks you ever looked at uh, Baalback and you ever looked at uh, uh, Puma Puko or whatever the name of that place is some of them places over there there are there are solid square blocks that weigh 1,600 tons. 
and they had no tools, supposedly. They had no way of cutting and smoothing them block, just as square as this pulpit table right here and, and just, as, uh, just as precise and slick as that right there. Now, you tell me how ancient people did that with a chisel and wrote, no way, no way. They had some help. The Bible said there were giants in the earth in those days. A big, 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 big man can move a big, 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 big rock and especially if he's getting help from them sons of God and some of that other stuff. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, God looked down and he saw his children. They were in all that demonic stuff. And all that, by the way, that uh, old Jeffrey Epstein, that guy that got a pervert, and uh, he's in jail now. I don't know if he's in jail. He'll be getting ready to be if he ain't careful uh, for uh, uh, being a pedophile and uh, messing with all those young people and everything messing up their lives. They say that guy was trying to repopulate the world with his DNA and because he's so smart and everything uh, great. And he, he's saying that they're, they're trying to create, they're trying to create a super race that has, that has computers actually built into their head and brain and eyes. In other words, make supermen and a super race right here on earth. That's what happened in the days of, of, of Moses and the days before the flood and the days of that man, the sons of God, daughters of men, a super race started coming up. But God looked down and his children cried out and said, oh Lord, where are you? Oh Lord, where are you? Oh Lord, where are you? And the Lord took care of a little bitty baby boy by the name of Moses. And God said, go down there and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And you know the story. I, I, I don't have time to tell all that story. You should know that story. My, my, what a story. Lord in mercy. If Hollywood could do that justice and do it right, Lord, we'd have revival in this country. Oh, Moses goes in there and he walks in there that day and he said, ha! Big boy, let my people go, says the Lord. And Pharaoh, who could have had him killed just like that, looked down and said, who are you, man? Get out of here. Uh, he said, uh, I don't know the Lord, and I ain't letting them people go. Get out of here before I have you killed. And you know the story, how that Moses threw down his rod, and boy, that thing become a serpent. And you know, the here come Jannies and Jambres like this, and they threw down their rods, and they became serpents. And Moses' rod swallowed up their rod, and the battle back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. He just messing with them there for a little while. And finally one night, God looked down and he said, this is it, son. Moses, you tell him, life's changed, Pharaoh. This is it. You either get right with God. You see, old Pharaoh got saved eight or nine times. Uh, during that time, never did get saved. And uh, he, he, he got religion every time there's a plague come, like some church people we all, we know. And, there, and then as soon as the trouble's over, his religion goes out the back window. And Pharaoh said, uh, I ain't letting them go. And Moses said, you will done it this time. And he said, I will not. And he said, all right, your firstborn gonna die. And the death angel came, started in the house of Pharaoh. Bam, went to the next house, bam, went to the next house, bam. Yes, that's the loving, sweet, loving God that they talk about all the time. He killed all the first. I've heard people say, God don't kill nobody. You are extremely ignorant or an extreme liar, one or the other, of the word of God. I'm telling you, the Bible said God, the death angel come through and slew them babies. And Pharaoh said, get out of here. I don't want you here no more. And God delivered his children out of Egypt. I'd like to see that, wouldn't you? Lord in mercy, I'd like to see that water stand up on both sides. I mean, it's just straight up. I mean, can you imagine the children of Israel? Dry ground. Come on, baby. There's a million of them. Look, mama, there's a shark. Come on. Uh, are we, are we at, uh, are we at uh, the water park? No. We're going through the Red Sea, you nut. Let's go. Pharaoh's address. We're going through here and coming out on the other side. I'm telling you tonight, there is no doubt God delivered in the past. He did. He did. He delivered the Hebrew children from the fire. He delivered Daniel from the lion's den. He delivered Paul and Silas out of jail. He delivered Jonah out of the belly of the whale. He delivered Job from all of his trouble. We don't have no problem believing God delivered in the past. Secondly, he delivered in the present. This is a little harder to believe. I know you're sitting there tonight, you say, Brother Danny, I know he got the children of Israel of Egypt. I know he got Daniel out of lion's den. I don't have no problem believing he got Jonah out of the belly of the whale. But I got bills to pay. What can he do for me? 
That's presents. I, I, don't, I don't find a case back there where somebody couldn't pay the bills. <laughs> maybe that was the woman, woman that had the widow's mite or maybe one of them, the Lord helped them, they got their taxes paid out of a fish's mouth and everything. Hey, it, the, real, the Lord don't have to work a real big miracle to pay your light bill. Uh, if he can get a million people out of Egypt's bondage and through a dry ground on an oath, I believe that he can help your, your head. If you'll let him. See, there's our problem. We don't have much problem believing God used to deliver, right? We can shout on that. Now it says he doth deliver. Does he still do it right now? Well, I can stand here tonight and give you personal testimony. The devil will try to say that you're just lucky. The devil, every time something happens to me, uh, and, and the Lord gets me out of it, the devil comes up to me when I face something else and he'll say, oh boy, you made it through that last battle, but I'm gonna get you this time. You think you, th- you made it through that and he makes you think you're just coincidental or something. Uh, but after it happens over and over and over and over again, I, just little simple things used to happen to me when I first started preaching. Uh, we used to go street preaching all the time. Somebody asked me the other day, you still street preach? I said, yeah, sure do. I don't think a preacher ever gets too big to preach on the street. Every preacher in the Bible was a street preacher, including Jesus. Everyone, good for you. To get out there and let them just laugh at you. People say, don't do no good. It'll do you some good if you do it. I'm telling you, it's, it embarrasses flesh, and that's good for you. I, I was preaching on the street one time. I was about 18 or 19. Not, no, I was about 19 or 20. And me and these boys went over to Hendersonville. We'd hit Iceville. We'd go to Hickory. We'd go to Charlotte. Every Saturday morning, we'd all pile in one of them's car and just go through. You don't find young men like that much anymore. I mean, we was 18, 17, 20, 21, 22. And we'd all pile in the car on Saturday. Instead of going fishing or playing ball, we went and preached on the street. And I remember standing there in, in Charlotte giving out tracts and, and in asphalt many, many times right there in the middle of town. And we, and we went to Hendersonville one day and I was standing there preaching and uh, some places they, they try to stop you and the police a lot of times will stop you uh, even if they don't even know their own laws. Some cities do have certain ordinances but, but to be honest about it, if you're on a public sidewalk, you've got a right to speak your mind. If you, if you go to court, you can beat it. Uh, you say, well, you can't preach. Yeah, yeah, you can. I can walk down the streets uh, with, with, with Jeremy and I can say, boy, it sure is good to be saved out here today, Andrew. I talk loud. You got a problem with that? Is that against the law? No, no. So I was talking loud with my Bible in my hand and all of a sudden uh, I saw this policeman coming across right toward me and I was scared to death. I thought, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, he's gonna arrest me. And I just kept right on preaching and these boys were out giving out tracts and I saw he was walking straight toward me. I said, oh Lord, help me. And I kept preaching. And about that time, there this little woman come up and she pulled right in this parking place uh, that had no parking sign there. And uh, I, 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 she pulled in there. And when the cop saw her do that, he bent over to her, her window and he said, uh, excuse me, ma'am. you can." And oh, she started arguing with him. She said, now listen, officer, I'm only gonna be in here a minute, you know, stuff like that. Oh, no, no. He said, ma'am, and, and I just kept right on a preaching and something says, keep preaching, boy, I'm delivering you. And I said, amen. I said, the Lord sent that little lady right here and got me off. Finally, I got through, closed my Bible, and we went on down the road. And you know, I begin to notice little things like that over and over and over and over and over. And then when I come to the big test, and you're gonna come to the big test, when I come to the hard test, and you're gonna come, if you're gonna live for God and do right, you're gonna go through some hard trials. There's no avoiding it. And when those hard times comes, I thought, God, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. And the Lord said, you remember what I done back yonder? And I said, yes. You remember what I done with the Hebrew children? Yes. You remember what, he said, I'm not a bit weaker, but I'm not special like they are. They had great faith. And he says, no, they didn't have no more than you got, Danny. Moses, Abraham uh, was a man of subject to like passions, Elias, as we are. He, they all had their doubts. And somehow, by the grace of God, a day would turn into a week, a week would 
would turn into a month, a month would turn into a year, and I looked back one day and said, I made it through by the grace of God. I'm telling you tonight, people, our God's still on the throne. He's still up there. He's not sick. He don't feel bad, and he's able to deliver you. He's able to help you. That don't mean he'll do every little old thing you say. That don't mean you can holler jump and he says how high. It does mean if you'll get your heart right, he'll deliver you through what you're going through. He said, well, he gonna save my marriage. He ain't gonna make nobody do nothing, but he'll help you through it one way or the other. He doth deliver. Now it's going a little harder. He will deliver. Future. Boy, it's easy to believe he did. And it's pretty hard to believe he does. It's really hard to believe he's going to. Oh my goodness. What are we going to do? I meet preachers all the time says, what are we going to do, preacher, when they start passing laws? And it's coming. You can count on it. It's coming. Uh, uh, there's no avoiding it. It's coming. If the Lord don't come, there will be laws passed against a lot of the stuff men you pre preach and believe. What are we going to do? Well, we can look back and say, God, you did it for them. God, you're doing it for us now. Lord, I believe that you will, shall, future, deliver me. Amen. David believed it. Old David believed it. David was over there that day, and he'd done had some battles. When he come to fight that giant, I like what David said. 2 Samuel 17. David was over there, and Saul told him, he said, you can't fight, man. You're, you're a, you're a, a strip, stripling or whatever they call him, just a young boy, probably in his teens. And they said, you cannot fight that man. He's nearly 10 feet tall. That's a big man. And, and depending on your, their definition of a, of a cubic back then, maybe even more. Cubics, there's 18 inches from here to here, but if you went by theirs, it might be like that. Uh, but anyway, he was 10 feet right out tall. And ladies and gentlemen, that big old guy stood there, his arms that big around, his sword was so big, uh, most of us probably couldn't pick it up, and little old David, little old teenage boy, looked at him and said, I'm going to fight him. And they said, you can't do it, there is no way in the world, listen people, God, listen to me, God specializes in getting people through what seems to be impossible situations. He specializes in stuff like that. He gets the glory. I, when everybody tells you you can't make it, when everybody tells you you're doomed, when everybody says give up, when everybody says you're not gonna make it like this, it'll never work. I'm telling you right then when he'll step in. Listen to this. David said this. He said he'd deliver me in the past. And Saul said, what you talking about? He said, I was out there one day watching my daddy's sheep. By the way, if you want the Lord to deliver you, watch after sheep. Check your Old Testament. Look how many of them guys was keeping sheep when the Lord put his hand on them. They wasn't working the stock market. They was working helping sheep. They wasn't growing up in king's houses. They were helping sheep. You know what I've found out? Over 40 years of ministry, I've found that if I'll devote my time trying to help God's sheep, God will look down and he'll help care a little brother Danny like me. Woo, hallelujah, I'm glad I found that out. That ain't why I do it. If I'm interested in his people, God will help me. Hey, you get you some kids, y'all. Where's our new one at? Where's he at, Kelly? Is he in here? Oh, there he is. Stand up back there, Jaden. There's the new man for a couple of weeks. Amen. And he's going to work tomorrow, I'm telling you. Ain't that right? You fished all day yesterday. You can work tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, he, he's, staying, he's staying with us for a couple of weeks. And you know what? It's an opportunity to invest in that kid. And get you some kids. Get you some kids. Get you something that's going to live forever. Get you a kid. Adopt one of these. And I'm not talking about maybe physically keeping them at your house, but adopt them here at church like some of y'all do. Uh, Susan and them do that. Uh, Jennifer does that with Awful and Dawful. And some of y'all do that with others. Get you one and let them sit beside you. And give them scripture and encourage them. Don't just sit there and feel sorry for yourself all the time. Keep God's sheep. He'll help you. David said, I want to tell you something. 
17 years old. He said, I was out there one day. He said, I was keeping my daddy sheep. And Saul was listening to him like that. Saul's taller than everybody, looking down on David, except for Goliath. And Goliath way up on his head by top of that screen there. He said, you can't fight him. He said, let me tell you something, King. He said, I was out there one day keeping daddy's sheep. And a bear come out of the woods. A bear. A bear strong. For you when you're 16. Bear strong when you're 70. Bear strong if you got a, 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 a 38 in your pocket. And he said, that bear come after my daddy's sheep. And he said, the spirit of the Lord come upon me. And he said, I went, I kissed. And I went, bam, and punched that bear in the nose. That's what you do. If a bear ever attacks you, hit him in the nose. They can't stand somebody to hit their nose. If you get the chance. If you're right before you're dead, hit him in the nose. But he, he has to get your stick in the nose. And he, he might have used a stick, I don't know. David said, I got a stick. I went, wham. I like I was playing for the New York Yankees. Wham, right in the nose. And he said that bear went off with a bloody nose and passed out and fell in the ditch. He said a few days later, there's a lion. A lion come out of the thicket. He said, the spirit of the Lord come upon me. He said, I. I said, come on. He said, I jujitsued him. I bah, 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 bah. He said, I jerked his beard. I poked him in his eyeballs. He said, I cut him up under the throat. I grabbed him like that, slung him off down the briar patch. And he said, he, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear. And God shall deliver me from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine who has defied the armies of the living God. Right, <laughs> what he was saying, well, you know, you know, I knew that, did you? Oh, I don't, I don't. I think that looks like there's something wrong with you. I ain't Bruce Lee, it looked like you're constipated or something. I don't know. But anyway, he said, I got him. He said, God delivered me in the past and God's gonna deliver me big guy here. So he puts that rock into that sling, a primitive well, uh, weapon made in 1611 B.C. And I never thought of that before, just now. But he comes at him like this, and he comes in there and says, hi, ah, big boy. The giant started laughing at him. <laughs> hey, Saul, that's the best you got? Oh my goodness, look who they sent to fight me, guys. Now get on out of here, boy. Now come on, come on, go home before you get hurt. I'll make hamburger meat out of you. I'll feed you to the dogs. And he said, I'll tell you one thing, big boy. I hope your wife's got insurance out on you because we're gonna put you to bed with a shovel. You understand me? Heavy, heavy, hang on your head, son. And he put that rock in there and he started slinging around, looked like a weed eater. And he let that rock go and that thing sailed through that eye. And old Goliath was laughing so hard he took his helmet off. Big mistake. And he put that thing down. And about that time, that rock, like a guided missile, out by the Holy Ghost in that thing, goes bam and sinks in that guy's forehead. I'd rather be in front of a machine gun and a rock that the Holy Ghost was in. That thing goes bam, and he don't never say another word. David runs and gets his sword, knocked him down with a rock, killed him with his own sword, and whacked his head off. Whack is a Greek word that you common, common peasants don't know. That means he severed his head from his, his body. Whacked it off. And he grabbed his old nasty hair shoe. Had old nasty, old curly, nasty hair and had rings in his nose. Had half his head shaved over here like this. Another half went down like that. And he held up a glass, old nasty, ugly teeth. There's about that long, big old blood coming out of his mouth. He said, what do you think about that, sir? And they shouted and won the victory. David said he did deliver. He will deliver. And God did. He 
did deliver. Now, let's get these thoughts and I'm done. Three things, quickly. For me and you. Number one, he delivered us in the past from the penalty of sin. When he died on the cross, he paid the debt for my sin and wiped it away at Calvary. Number two, he's delivering us in the present from the power of sin. See, when you got saved, God delivered you from the penalty of sin. Your sins were all paid for on the cross of Calvary. Now, if you get up in the morning and you think you ain't got nothing to shout about, throw your hands up and shout about that. Throw your hands up and say, my sins were all paid for at Calvary. Hallelujah. Thank God that's the penalty of sin. Then he delivers you now, present from the power of sin. Romans chapter six and verse 14. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Let me say that again. Don't, listen, you kids, you don't have to live defeated all the time. You say, well, I got right with camp, Brother Danny, and I'm already backslid. You don't have to live like that. Remember those promises you made at camp. Make them again tonight. Serve God. You do not have to live defeated. And by the way, Mom and Daddy, you don't either. You don't either. There is no sin. Yesterday was visiting. Over and over and over. Drugs, 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 drugs. Seeing a girl not too far from here. She's sitting on the couch like this. And talking to me. Like a demon had a hold of her. And I said, have you ever been saved? She said, yes, when I was young. And and I can't know, gosh. She's living under the power of sin. He delivered us in the past from the, from the penalty of sin. And he can deliver you right now from the power of sin. There is no sin that ought to rule you in your life. I didn't say you'd be perfect. I didn't say you wouldn't sin. I said sin shall not have dominion over you. That means I don't have to go around saying, well, I just can't help it. I just can't help it. I'm sorry. This, I heard a guy say that one time. He'd get mad and cuss and lose his temper. He said, I'm sorry. This is just me. I said, you're a sorry, low down, good for nothing liar. That ain't just, listen, I, we could all say that. We could all say, well, I can't help it. I, I cheat and lie and steal a little bit. It's just me. No, you don't have to cheat and lie and steal. You don't have to uh, lust, live your life full of lust. Let, you can get your mind clean, boys. You hear me? You can get your mind clean. If you'll let yourself dirty video games, and dirty things on your phone and let the Lord clean your mind. He deliver you from the power of sin. Say amen right there. Girls, you don't have to watch every lifetime movie that comes on. That's a dirty movie for girls. Because it makes you think, oh, I can't even understand being that dumb. He can deliver you from the power of sin. The best rehab in the world is walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm telling you tonight, I, I, w- I wouldn't be a preacher if I thought our gospel and our God didn't have the power to help you get the victory over drugs, over alcohol, over whatever it is that's, that's ruling in your life. Gossip, lying, unbelief, anything, brother, he'll deliver you from the power of sin. Thirdly, and I'm done. He did deliver us from the penalty of sin. He is delivering us from the power of sin. Guess what? He's going to deliver us from the presence of sin. Eternally. Never bothered again. We're going to a place where there'll be no more lying. We're going to live in a city where there'll be no more stealing. You can leave your doors open on your mansion door. There'll be no lying. There'll be no cheating. There'll be no murder. There'll be no more taking God's name in vain. 
There'll be no more cussing. There'll be no more dirty movies. There'll be no rock music in heaven. Hear me, hear me well. There'll be no rock music in heaven. Amen. So these churches that have it, they better have all they want to have because they ain't going to have it up there. They ain't going to have rap music neither. And about half of this country gospel. Amen. That bring music that honors the Lord. He's going to deliver us to a mansion. Ain't going to be no drugs. Ain't going to be no pot. Ain't going to be no meth. Ain't going to be no cocaine. Ain't going to be no heroin. Ain't going to be no flocka. For the former things are passed away. He delivered us in the past. He's delivering us right now in the present. He will deliver us in the future. I want to encourage you tonight. There's somebody here tonight that you're thinking, I don't know how I'm going to get through the mess I'm in. You keep trusting him. He delivered you last time. And if you'll pay attention, he is delivering you right now. Somehow or another, it works out. And then one day you'll look up and say, he did deliver, he is delivering, he's going to deliver. It helps me to know he's going to deliver because I know he already has delivered me. That, that makes me know, well, he done what he said then, done doing what he said now, he'll do what he said then. We're just as good as there right now, y'all. We're just as good as in heaven with our feet up under the table shouting the praises of God right now. Hallelujah! He's a deliverer. Stand with the heads bowed, please. Every head bowed and their eye closed. Come on, Miss Desi. She's playing softly tonight. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Now, I don't know your need tonight. Don't need to know. Don't want to know. But God does. Whatever, maybe it's a home situation or with your parents or step-parents or husband or wife or job or doctor, hospital. I don't know what your situation is tonight. I can promise you one way or the other. He did deliver. He is delivering. Thank God he will deliver you. Come on right now. Come on, let's pray about it. Let's put this in the Lord's hand. You say, preacher, can he really deliver me out of the mess I'm in? Yes, he sure can. Yes, he sure can. If you'll do right, amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all pray for our man up here. He's in the altar. Our young man. Y'all pray for him. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on tonight. You say, Brother Danny, I need God to deliver me. I need God to deliver me. I've, I've got something that just seems like I just can't get the victory over. Can he deliver me? Absolutely. 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 Amen. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Come on. Come on. Let's get in this altar and pray tonight. Thank God. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God, take these thoughts here tonight. Use them for your glory. Do what ought to be done in every life and heart. Bless our service here tonight. And Lord, may this service be used to help somebody through this week in a long life's way. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.